Hi. So yeah, uh, good afternoon. Uh, yeah, my name is Neil Holmes. Uh, welcome to my talk, How to Game the Xbox System. Um, so yeah, I'm a developer partner manager working for Idea Xbox. I support developers all over Europe. Um, my background is I started in games about 32, 33 years ago uh, as an independent developer. Uh, and I worked my way up through kind of programmer, technical manager, producer, and then um, I joined Xbox seven years ago. So in my talk today, I'd like to give you a quick overview of kind of what our platforms are, our philosophy towards game development and publishing at Microsoft, and then give you some tips about how you can get the best out of working with us. Uh, we'll go through what the Idea Xbox program is, how it fits within Xbox. Uh, we'll take a quick look at our newly announced developer acceleration program. And we'll also cover some of the dev tools and support we have available. And I'll talk you through the best ways to highlight your games on our platform and the things you can do to ensure you get a successful launch. Uh, I've got about 30 minutes worth of content, so we might not have time for questions at the end. But I'm going to be hanging around for the next two days. So if you see me, just come and say hi. Uh, right, so let's jump straight into Microsoft's vision for gaming and what it means for you as game creators. So our mission statement is to allow people to play the games they want with the people they want, anywhere they want. We want to help put the gamer at the center, welcoming more gamers to our platforms, offering more choice of how to play and where to play. Everything we're doing as a platform and uh, with our tools and services that we create is built with this vision in mind. Uh, the key pillar uh, of our vision is, of course, the traditional console. Uh, we launched Xbox Series globally in November 2022. In number, sorry, November 2020, and we're really pleased with the positive feedback we've had from gamers. We focused on a seamless transition from the old Xbox One system, investing in cross-generational uh, purchasing, backwards compatibility, and even enhancing games from previous generations through things like our FPS Boost program. Uh, and we launched with a two-skew strategy. We launched Series X, which is focused on power and, and is a skew for the kind of the core audience, and Series S, which is focused on value and for the mainstream uh, audience. And as you might have seen from our showcase a couple of weeks ago, um, we also just announced a new version of the Series S in black, which now comes with a one terabyte storage as standard. Uh, and in addition to our consoles, we've never been more focused on PC gaming than we are right now. Uh, our Game Development Kit, the GDK, enables PC, console, and cloud development in a single environment, making it easier than ever to integrate Xbox features uh, across your game running on console and on Windows. And we also have the Xbox app now in Windows, which is a streamlined gaming dedicated space uh, which surfaces and curates Game Pass content and other gaming content directly to consumers. Um, and there's Windows 11 itself, uh, which offers more deeply integrated gaming features than any previous version of Windows. And as we look to make gaming more accessible, we're also invested heavily in cloud gaming, um, both so that existing players can play where they want and when they want, but also so that creators like yourselves can engage new, larger audiences outside of the traditional console marketplaces. Um, Xbox Cloud Gaming is included as part of our Game Pass Ultimate subscription. And you can stream games from our, your own Xbox at home or from entirely from the cloud, from our dedicated Xbox blades that run in our Azure data centers. Uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming allows you to play content on Android, iOS, PC, Mac, Chromebooks, uh, even on Xbox consoles and newer models of Samsung TVs. And since launching in 2020, we've seen tremendous growth. Uh, we've had more than 10 million people try uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and 60% of those people have tried a new game for the first time by streaming it, uh, which really helps with discoverability. And we're also using uh, cloud to make titles more accessible. Since all of the blades in our data center run Xbox Series hardware, it means that users on lower spec PCs or even on previous generation Xboxes can play games that wouldn't otherwise be available to them by streaming them from the cloud. OK, that's enough about our vision. <laughs> so let me talk a little bit about Idea Xbox as a program and what it means to you and how it can be useful for you as a game developer. So Idea, Idea Xbox enables qualified developers to self-publish digital games on our platforms, including Xbox One, Xbox Series, the Windows Store, and Xbox Cloud Gaming. I need to put an asterisk next to that 
digital games bit, because uh, we've changed that slightly, but I'll come to that in a minute. Um, our top goal with the program really has always been to make shipping games on Xbox as simple as possible for developers. Um, that's the process of getting a game built and running on the console and also working through kind of like configuring the store or just signing a contract. Idea Xbox is like a one-stop shop for everything you need to publish on Xbox. Um, but it's not just about publishing. We also host what we call developer days throughout the year. We host these all around the world uh, where you we can speak to many developers all at once, talk about kind of like updates to the program, make announcements, share best practices, give like store data insights, that kind of stuff. And it's all help, designed to help developers be successful on our platforms. And over the years, uh, we've started several new programs at Xbox in direct response to feedback we've had from developers uh, at these sorts of events. Things like our early access program, Xbox Game Preview, uh, and support for things like cross-platform play and cross-platform progression, allowing players to play with people on other platforms and carry their progress over to wherever it is they want to play. Ironically, we've also recently enabled retail disc publishing uh, for idea Xbox developers, so it's not just about digital anymore. Uh, the retail program is still a pilot, um, we're working with a, a limited number of partners right now, but you can now make physical copies of your games and ship with a kind of low minimum order quantity. Uh, early this year at GDC, we announced the latest stats for IDEA Xbox. To date, we've published more than 3,000 independent games on Xbox through IDEA Xbox, and we've paid out over $4 billion in royalties to our partners. Uh, we are really proud of the quality and the variety of content that launches on Xbox through IDEA Xbox. And creativity and experimentation are the things we love most about working with independent developers. And to add to those stats, uh, we have over 3,000 games in active development right now. Uh, we have more than 5,000 studios registered across 100 countries. And more than 550 games from IDEA Xbox developers have been included as part of Game Pass. Um, and there are also 30 games that were released in Game Preview on console, which is kind of our version of early access. Um, so IDEA Xbox just keeps growing and keeps going from strength to strength. At GDC this year, we celebrated our 10th anniversary, and we announced a new program, the Developer Acceleration Program. This new program aims to empower underrepresented developers with, and give them the resources and information that they need to bring their creativity, innovation, and originality to Xbox. For emerging developers, uh, the investment required to release on multiple platforms often conflicts with other priorities, uh, such as actual development or polishing or you know, marketing. Uh, and for this reason, the Developer Acceleration Program is offering a non-recoupable funding model to help with porting to Xbox. It does not require exclusivity or any company equity or anything like that. Uh, the offers will all be unique for each developer and will be tailored to take into account the developer's needs and their experience. The types of the developers that we're seeking to support include, but are not limited to, developers who are led by women, uh, comprised of diverse ethnicities, <laughs> LGBTQIA plus communities, developers with disabilities, developers from emerging markets, and teams with unique perspectives. And this also includes independent developers who are working on a game that centers the experience around a diverse character or that prioritizes accessibility. If you're questioning whether your projects might qualify for this, the easiest thing to do is just to reach out and ask us. Uh, we're happy to discuss and kind of see what might fit. And qualifying developers will also gain access to information and best practices in the form of monthly webinars called Green Room events. Uh, where the IDEA Xbox team will cover topics like game lifecycle, marketing tips, certification preparation, that kind of stuff. Um, so many underrepresented developers have historically uh, lacked access to resources and networks to get their ideas off the ground. So the Developer Acceleration Program is also piloting a prototyping initiative to partner with a small number of promising developers with great ideas. Um, again, we'll offer funding and we'll give support to teams to create prototypes that accurately communicate their vision. Again, the funding offered for this is non-recoupable. And uh, yeah, we've actually been running this program kind of behind the scenes for a few years. Um, but we've only now really kind of announced it and made it public. And to date, this effort has helped more than 100 developers um, offsetting the cost of bringing their games to Xbox. OK, so I want to give a quick overview of what the actual development environment looks like and the tools that are available to you. As I kind of briefly mentioned, the Xbox ecosystem is made up of three different physical platforms. There's Xbox One, Xbox Series, and Windows Store on PC. 
And to make development easier, uh, we created the GDK, or the Game Development Kit, um, which is the same API for kind of all of these platforms. The GDK is uh, developed through Windows uh, using Visual Studio. However, if you want to target Xbox, you will need an Xbox dev kit. The good news is that if you sign up for IDEA Xbox, we will give you two dev kits free of charge. Um, and if you want to take a closer look at the GDK, um, the majority of the SDK is now public and is available on GitHub at the link there. So you can go and take a look and see what it is you'd need to actually do before you even get hold of the kits and get signed up. Um, we've also worked closely with middleware partners like Epic and Unity to make sure that engines fully support the GDK uh, for development on all of our platforms. Many other middleware technology is also available. Um, so once you've signed up, again, just reach out to our ID Xbox developer support, and they can walk you through the available options. Um, and we can also help with all of your online multiplayer and cloud needs. Um, obviously, we have Azure, uh, and we also have a, a, a thing called PlayFab. Um, so PlayFab offers a peer-to-peer -peer networking solution called PlayFab Party. Uh, it's a secure, fast, reliable peer-to-peer -peer networking, and it's the recommended stack that we use on Xbox for all of our peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, the cool thing about PlayFab Party, though, is it's completely platform agnostic, too. So if you're building a game and you want to do peer-to-peer cross-network, PlayFab Party supports not only Xbox, but also PC, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android. So you can do cross-network with all of those platforms at the same time. Um, and if you have additional cloud requirements, such as servers, storage, compute, AI, uh, we can also have um, discussions with you about how we can do that through our Azure services and through the IDEA Azure program. So IDEA Azure is like a sister program to IDEA Xbox, uh, and it can directly help you with the cost of running your multiplayer games as well. Um, it has things like $5,000 in Azure credits available, and it will also allow you to do things like make the PlayFab services free on other platforms. Um, and IDEA Azure can also help you with managing things like distributed development, with tools and tech to make managing remote team members and distribution of code and build assets and things like that much simpler. Uh, and we can also help with uh, analytics, uh, metrics, title storage. And uh, if you want to make your online community as inclusive as possible, uh, we also provide tech to do real-time speech to text, real-time translation, and real-time text back to speech. So you can have people talking to each other in your game in different languages, and they'll be able to understand each other. Uh, which is really cool. Um, it's free to sign up to IDEA Azure, so I recommend going and just signing up and seeing what's available. Um, and I briefly just wanted to mention uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming Development as well. We often get questions about how much work is required for games to run in the cloud, uh, and the answer is there is no work required. Uh, we just run the Xbox version of the game, so if you've shipped on Xbox, it'll just run in the cloud. Um, there is optional stuff you can do in the GDK, so you can detect when your game is running in the cloud, and you can rescale the UI, change the font size, you can add touch controls, like native touch, pinch to zoom, and things like that. Uh, but it's all optional. The game will just run with, with zero work from you. OK, so let's talk a bit about Game Pass. So hopefully everybody's heard of Game Pass. <laughs> um, so Game Pass is our subscription service. Um, it offers access to hundreds of games for a great monthly price. Um, and thanks to Game Pass, our players kind of get more value from gaming and an easy way to try new games and experience new things. Game Pass is a curated catalog. So if you're interested in being part of Game Pass, once you've signed up to Idea Xbox, you should reach out to us and let us know that you'd like to be considered for inclusion. Um, and the reason we love Game Pass so much and the reason we think it's being really successful is that it helps create value both for its customers, the millions of members that we have, but also critically for our partners as well. Uh, our Xbox players told us they wanted to get more value from gaming. They wanted an easy way to discover, try, and experience more games. Um, and, we want, and they also wanted a high-quality uh, gaming experience that was easy to share with their friends and to participate in rich communities. And for partners, those same three elements are just as important, value, discovery, and community. Game Pass provides another way to help drive value and help our partners make more money. By providing a large audience, um, we can introduce millions of new gamers to your titles, um, and we can create millions of new fans in the process. So having a vibrant community of players engaging and talking about your game is critical for building awareness on our platform, engagement, and re-engagement, but it also helps drive awareness on your other platforms as well. Uh, the audience and mechanisms we built through Game Pass are a catalyst for building healthier and vibrant communities. 
And we have the numbers to back this up as well. So Game Pass subscribers play 40% more games than they did before they became a subscriber. And they play that across 30% more genres than they did before they became a subscriber. And that includes titles inside and outside of the catalog. Uh, members are willing to invest in the experience, and they spend more money after joining Game Pass than they did before they were members of Game Pass. They purchase games inside and outside the library, and they also purchase additional content for the games that they enjoy within the library. On average, across the Game Pass library, partners see engagement increase by more than eight times when their game goes into Game Pass. And Game Pass also builds strong communities. Game Pass Ultimate members have three times the number of social connections on Xbox of the non-members. And they're also four times more likely to stream games than non-members, uh, which accelerates words of mouth and momentum and helps support yourselves elsewhere outside of our ecosystem. And we also have what we call the Game Pass Perks program. This is another avenue we have to help you drive value and increase player engagement with your games. Even if your game isn't currently in Game Pass, you can still engage with Game Pass audience through perks. By giving away things like skins, currency packs, starter packs, Game Pass subscribers are incentivized to go and try your game so that they get the benefit of the gifted content. This is a great option for encouraging re-engagement in long-range titles or for giving free-to-play titles a huge influx of new players. Okay, so what things can you ask us to do to help your titles be successful? So our store is where you need to grab the attention of players. Uh, we have a dedicated store team to help advise you on setting up things like pre-orders, player incentives, release timing and discounting, etc. And there is also a monthly newsletter that we send out to you so that you can be aware of upcoming ID-themed sales and events so you can ask to be part of them. We also have um, an editorial-based dedicated idea Xbox section uh, in the store that refreshes every two weeks. Uh, rather than simply focusing on new releases, we pick games that we really like, ones that we think are particularly cool or unique, or titles that we just think need to get more engagement. And we have a dedicated emerging creators game collection in the store, which helps drive visibility for partners that are part of our new developer acceleration program. Uh, and we also run articles uh, written by yourselves on the Xbox blog called Xbox Wire. The games media frequently check Xbox Wire for announcements, so anything posted here has a great chance of being picked up by the mainstream press outlets. Um, so make sure that you reach out to us if you've got content that you'd like us to show here. Things like developer diaries, other interesting stories, like you know, how you came to build your game, that kind of stuff. We obviously can't keep track of everybody's marketing plans. So if you want to be included in stuff like this, it's super important that you ask us. You need to be proactive and ask us to, to help you, basically. Uh, and we also have a fantastic community team that will stream your game and will tweet about your games on the Idea Xbox channels. And this content is also carried by the other social accounts for Xbox, Xbox Wire, or Xbox Game Pass. So it's great visibility. If you're making an announcement and you want us as a platform to retweet it, just make sure you ask us. And if you're rolling out a trailer as part of an announcement or update, we can also post it on our Idea Xbox YouTube channel. Just let us know a couple of weeks in advance make, before you go live. Make sure you give us a version that has the Xbox IDENTS on it. And uh, yeah, make sure you don't tell us like two days after you've posted it on your own channel because we won't carry stuff that's already been published. Um, so just yeah, make sure you reach out in advance and let us know. And we also have great support from Major Nelson for Idea Xbox titles. He has a regular show on Twitch channel that runs every Wednesday and focuses on two new releases each week. And twice a year, we run the Idea Xbox showcase events on Twitch. If you'd like to be included in these, again, you just need to ask us. Uh, and finally, we also run a yearly Summer Game Fest demo event where we publish around 50 demos. Um, so if you want to be part of that, if you've got the bandwidth to build a demo or you've got a vertical slice or something, it's a really great way of getting visibility for your game. Um, and as you can see, we've got a ton of ways that we can support you. Um, but you'll only get included if you ask us. So it's important that you kind of follow along in the newsletters. Make sure that when we announce that we're going to do events, engage, reach out to us. Um, everybody goes through the same process on our platform. Um, like every game gets the same chance. We look at literally everything that comes through, even for like the big shows like the E3 events and things like that. Um, we're always looking for content. So yeah, don't be shy, ask us. Oh yeah, one other thing. So um, I wanted to highlight this accessibility. Um, at Xbox, we really care about making gaming accessible to everybody. And not only should you feel good about making your game more accessible, 
Uh, but sharing your game's accessibility features will also help you stand out on the Xbox Store. Uh, we have highlighted collections, detailed feature breakouts uh, on your product page uh, for accessibility features. It's a win for everyone, uh, and you can check out more information there about how to get involved with it. OK, how to game the system, or probably more how not to screw up. Um, you'd be amazed how many developers get these things wrong. Um, it's not really rocket science stuff, but I wanted to go through this because we think these are kind of the top 10 ways people fail. Um, so number one, pricing. Um, in reality, not that many people actually compare pricing between platforms, but if people notice that your pricing on a platform is way out compared to something else, uh, you will get review bombed for it. Um, if you really need to differentiate your price on different platforms, it needs to be really clear to users why you're doing that. E.g., you're adding extra content, or you've optimized it for 4K. Yeah, important. Uh, number nine, poor translation of metadata. Uh, this is a real sales killer. Um, it just identifies your product as a low-quality title for people in the regions where you've used poor-quality translations. Uh, make sure you use a professional translator or crowdsource your translations. Uh, this is such a simple thing to get right, and getting it wrong can make a huge difference to the perceived quality of your game. Uh, number eight. All right, this one's seemingly pretty obvious kind of marketing 101 stuff, uh, but it's amazing how many people use like throwaway marketing copy. At the very least, the copy for your game should be professionally written, and it should tell customers what your game is about and what kind of game it is. Ideally, it should also describe what's special about your game. Just focusing on like, explaining the backstory without talking about what the game actually is really won't help you very much. You need to really carefully think what you're putting in the marketing copy. Number seven, trailers. Trailers are super important for your product page. Players want to see your game in action. Don't just rely on using screenshots. Um, you can also use trailers as a call to action. If you're doing a pre-order or a launch, having a trailer that goes along with it and contains a call to action can really help. Uh, one thing to note, in our experience, live action in trailers really isn't worth it. Like Fans hate it. It's super expensive. Just avoid it. Uh, number six, uh, release regions. Release everywhere. Release in as many regions as you can. Uh, the localization barrier to entry is actually really low. You only need to localize your metadata and get the appropriate rating for each region. And if you localize your in-game content as well, that's even better. Uh, local regions will cover games that have localizations for their regions and give extra marketing support. But really, just doing the bare minimum of localizing your metadata and actually publishing in regions will just generate more sales for you. Um, IART ratings for almost every region are free. There's really no reason not to release virtually everywhere these days. And it's worth noting that in our experience, sim shipping is far better than delayed shipping. Um, you might think it's cool to, like, or not cool, but like you might think it's the only way to do it is to like launch on PC first and then come to console later. But if you can launch multiple platforms at the same time, that is the chance you have to make the biggest splash. You'll get the most coverage in the press. You'll get the most people playing your game at once. It will really drive sales. Um, so your biggest and best chance to get noticed. We honest, honestly encourage you to do this. Um, you know, launch on as many platforms as you can on day one. Uh, so number five, yeah, other platforms will tell you different things. Um, but from our own data analysis, Day one discounts really don't drive sales. Um, one caveat is that like, if you're doing a discount on somebody else's store, you should probably do it on ours as well. Um, but our recommendation would be that if you've got DLC, skins, additional content, create a launch day bundle that adds value to your game, rather than discounting from the players who are going to be most engaged and most willing to spend on your title. Um, discounts are really useful, uh, but later in the life cycle. So save them for that. Don't waste them at launch. Um, which brings me nicely to number four. So we see many developers make this mistake. The best practice is to plan your discounting strategy like a year in advance, and then work with us and your other platform holders to get them set up. It's much easier to get them on our calendar and then change them later if something changes in what you want to do uh, than it is to try and arrange a sale or a discount at the very last minute. Uh, if you're only thinking about your discounts after you launch, then it's already too late. Uh, make sure you plan it way in advance. OK, almost done. Uh, number three, uh, I know it's super easy for me to say, um, but you should try to get through certification on all of your platforms as early as you can, like two months before launch, ideally. Um, like, I know development is hard. I've been there. Budgets are tight. You always want to keep working on the game right up to the last minute. 
But if you can get the game finished a couple of months before you actually want to launch, it gives you so much more scope to have a successful launch. It gives you plenty of time to get like review codes out to people, get streamers and influencers starting playing the game. It means you can set up a pre-order, you can tweak your trial to get it just right, you can beta test, like you can set up discounts, you can start to build momentum into your launch. Don't rush your launch. Like, it's, it's great to think, like, okay, my game's done. I'm going to launch it. It's, it's the wrong way to do it. You only get one chance to launch your game. So, no, don't rush it. Okay, number two, marketing efficiently. Uh, so, this chart is, looks complicated. But basically, on the left, it goes from, like, easy things at the bottom to hard things at the top in terms of, like, how much they're going to cost you. And on, on the right, it's if inefficient stuff at the bottom to really strong return on investment at the top. Um, you really want to pick your battles when it comes to marketing. Uh, it's great to kind of like take part in things like Gamescom or like fly your whole team out to whatever E3 is called next year um, and like be on the show floor. But you're only going to get to see realistically a few thousand people of those things. You want to be looking at trying to engage with marketing that can reach the biggest number of players possible. Um, the general rule of thumb for most indie game marketing is like say, focus on efficient channels. Um, think long and hard about how you're spending your marketing budget. And also, bear in mind that not all social media is created equal. Um, we've been hearing from a lot of people who have like hundreds of thousands of views on TikTok, but they're not seeing them translate into actual sales. So yeah, pick your platforms and make sure you know what you're doing. <laughs> um, OK, number one, all right, box art. Um, this is kind of a duh um, piece of advice, but it's so important, and so many developers get it wrong. If you're unable to pick your box out, out from an image like this, um, then it's not working for you. Box art really is the number one driver of clicks in the store. And just to hammer it home, um, because it really is that important, if you've published on like PC or on mobile, the box art might not necessarily translate well onto console. Think about your average console consumer. They're going to be sitting on a couch two meters from the TV. Um, they're not looking at like a close-up view of your box art. Um, so yeah, print your box art out and stick it on a wall and then like stand two meters away from it and see if you still love it as much as you do when you're looking out on your monitor like here. Um, and I've put some kind of random examples up here of, of box arts that I think do this really well. Um, they stand out. They're quite simple. They clearly tell you what the game's called. And they also give you an idea of what the game's about, like Ark, for example. Like, oh, hey, I'm going to ride a dinosaur, and I've got a gun, and it looks cool, and it's a weird sci-fi thing. Kind of like it tells you a lot about the game without being cluttered or busy. Uh, and the same with all of these um, box arts. So yeah. Um, one other piece of advice, do not use kind of like sexually exploitative or risque box art. Like you will get people clicking it, but they won't be the kind of people that you want to actually be clicking it. They won't buy your game, they're just clicking it because, you know. Um, and also you're likely, if you've got like slightly suspicious looking box art, you're probably not going to get included in platform promotions and things like that. We will just rule you out. Cool. And that's kind of it. Um, so how do you get started um, for publishing Xbox Store, Cloud Gaming, Game Pass? Just go to xbox.com forward slash publish. It's super easy to sign up. Uh, the process is super simple. You register with the idea Xbox team, submit your game concept, and then we approve it. Um, and then download the GDK. We'll send you the dev kits. Work on your game, submit it to certification, and then publish. Um, sounds easy, right? Uh, we've got a dedicated team for every single one of these steps. And when you sign up to the program, you'll get email aliases that you can talk to for marketing, for technical support, for events. And just don't be shy. Ask us questions. If you get stuck, there'll be forums you can talk to us on as well. There's loads of support. But the initial sign-up process is free. It doesn't matter where you are in the development process. I encourage you to sign up. And there are many ways to stay in touch with us. <laughs> so I'll leave this up for a little bit so you can take pictures or make notes or whatever. 